Millwall Rovers was founded in 1885 on the Isle of Dogs in London's East End. The early teams played on sites around Millwall Dock, earning them the nickname of the Dockers. They came from a background of poverty, hard work and danger, where toughness was necessary for survival. The Isle of Dogs, cut off by the docks, was poor, but proud of its isolation. It saw itself as separate and different. In the 1880s, the working classes of Britain became football mad, or at least the men. For most women, Saturday afternoon off meant housework and childcare, not leisure. Millwall were a local works team at Morton's Food Factory. Many of the workers had come from Scotland in search of work, bringing with them their colours, blue and white, their flag, the cross of St Andrew, and their symbol, the lion rampant. Despite early success, the club remained poor. The director's lack of ambition in not joining the Football League meant that they long remained a low-status local team. This was a time when hard-working men got together for football and a drink on their Saturday afternoons. In those early days, the team was sponsored by local pubs, like the George, often owned by club shareholders who profited by their association with football. But in search of bigger crowds and higher revenue, the directors deserted the island and moved south across the Thames to Deptford. The Den opened in 1910. Despite their anger at not being consulted, many supporters from the Isle of Dogs remained loyal. My family come from the Isle of Dogs, the original Millwall, and his father supported Millwall from the foundation of the club. My father came down here with his brothers, and I think it was 1910 when they come to the den, they just carried on from there. They used to walk through the foot tunnel at Greenwich and come through, and that's how it's all started. The new supporters from Bermondsey, Rotherhithe, Deptford, had a similar background. Most were dockers vocal in their support and renowned for speaking their minds. Football fever continued to dominate the free time of huge numbers of working class men and boys. first brought me down here in 1920s, late and I was a youngster, and uh, of course I straight away I took to watching Millwall and it stuck in my blood, it's like being inoculated. I got got the jab and that was it, and then I started coming down here and supporting them. When I had the time off I played football a bit myself, but of course I still had my uh, uh, thoughts for Millwall. I used to live and sleep in Millwall. There have been photographs all around the wall, indoors and what have you. A record crowd packed into the Millwall ground for the only cup tie in London. And before the game began, hundreds left their places and ran to find better seats. Order was restored after a time and then the teams came out. First Millwall, while the crowd surged and swayed like a wheat field in a wind. Then the white jerseyed men from the north, Derby County. At last, Derby Millwall Rockstar. were in the Football Millwall League, and they maintained their reputation for cup challenges, as in the fifth round against Derby County in 1937. Thrills came early. 
vigorous attack by Derby found the Millwall goal in danger. A shot. But it went safely into the crowd. Again, the onlookers got restive and rushed across the pitch. Then once more, the play got really exciting and the spectators got all worked up. A few minutes later came the first goal for Derby. A battering attack found Keane in possession and he scored. It became common for huge crowds to gather at the den. And in cinema newsreels of the period, we get a glimpse of those supporters. The present capacity is 24,000, but in 1937, crowds of 47,000 were packed into the same small stadium. Batting for that extra goal to get into round six. It seemed that Millwall had it. From the centre, the ball went to Mangnall, who popped it into the derby net, but it was offside. Are you still eating? At last, Millwall's persistent attack had its reward. McCartney took the ball and nicked it in. They were crowds whose enthusiasm literally knew no bounds. And for a finish, the crowd ran wild, bursting over the pitch in a crazy, chaotic mess. A cup tie never witnessed any more amazing scenes. Just fantastic. The lions roared, and they would roar from kick-off to the final whistle. And uh, this lifted the team, of course, and uh, <clears throat> they always said, the Millwall roar was worth a gold start. 